Find a place in your mat. Take a few deep breaths and just recognize that you've taken time to be on your mat today. And notice how you're feeling. Just notice the intensity of your breath, the temperature of your breath. If it's high in your chest or from your belly or in your shoulders, notice your body, any muscles that are tight, any adjustments that you need to make on yourself or your costume. Maybe notice where you're touching the ground. With that, start to deepen your breaths. We'll do a box breath because box turtles are kind of like Bowser, right? <laughs> if it doesn't work for you, do what you need. So inhale, two, three, hold, two, three, exhale, two, three, and hold out, inhale, hold, exhale and hold it out, inhale, hold, exhale, hold it out. And as you inhale, start going at your own pace. If this works or find a breath that works for you. And as you're settling into these nice box breaths, Again, I am Roofing Designs of Roofing Designs, and this is Designs for Zen, an adjustable version. Find your own yoga. Everyone has different abilities, and everyone has different levels of energy. Everyone has changes in moods. No two people are alike. My type of yoga is what I call Bob Ross yoga, where there's no mistakes, and you have to find what works for you. And this is a big one. Continue breathing. So for me, the last month I've had some health issues and I haven't been able to practice yoga the way I normally do. I haven't been able to lay flat or do any inversions. So that means no forward folds, no down dogs, nothing. So I've had to adjust and I wanted to share some of the things that I've done with you. Maybe you also need adjustments in your life or maybe it's just another way to stretch, a different way to stretch. Just because you have limitations doesn't mean that you can't do yoga. Yoga is for every body, right? And there is no better truth than what we'll be doing today. So start to bring your breath back to normal. Maybe fluttering your eyes closed. Just noticing how you feel. We're gonna set our intention for today's practice. You can select an intention that you choose. I will offer to meet yourself where you are. Meet yourself where you are. You may be in a different place today than you were yesterday, but giving yourself that grace to be able to accept yourself and accept where you are and how you feel by meeting yourself wherever you currently are, that's really powerful. Whatever your intention that you set, we're going to seal it with a big inhale, arms up. Exhale, draw your palms together down to heart center. We're going to do two more breaths. Inhale in. Exhale. And then just seal it one big breath in. And let it all go. And welcome to your yoga practice. We're going to get started with warm ups. Again, I'm going to offer these kinds of warm ups. Find whatever works for you. Try other things and think about how it feels for yourself. So, again, first we're going to do shoulder rolls. I really love them. So, shoulders up, back, down, forward, up, back, and down. Doing four corners again. We love to do our four corners here. Stretching out, noticing how it feels. My gosh, the area between my shoulder blades is super tight. If you've d done our ball massage yoga, that's where I want to just lay on my back and massage those little knots out. I might do that after this. 
And again, we find balance here. We go both directions. So now forward, down, back, and up. Again, you can find all of my yoga sessions here on Twitch and YouTube at Roof Doing Designs. Notice how your arms are moving. I've got mine floating a little bit because I have these amazing super spikies on. <laughs> so again, different bodies, different movements. All right, now come to stillness. Start to just roll your head back and forth. Do not do a full circle. Just slowly rocking, starting small, getting bigger as you find what movements you want to release your neck. Maybe you don't like neck rolls and you want to do something else. That's fine too. We've done slow where you hold your head to one side. That's fine too. Now I've got my head almost to my shoulders and I'm just pausing there. And maybe just again, you could put that string that's pulling from your nose and move your neck around at the end. Just find how you can stretch that neck. Oh yeah. I've also got a spiky collar on, which changes the way that my neck moves. I am not stabbing myself there, not too pointy. <laughs> And another rule for designs for Zen Yoga, always have fun, right? Laugh at yourself. As long as you're not getting hurt, there's no pain or tightness or soreness, go ahead. So now if you can, you can start to do full neck circles. Again, to your ability. No pain, tightness, tingling, electricity, soreness, sharpness, none of that. And I'm just going to do a little bit of a finger massage on my neck here if you have a ball or something else you want to do again feel free i do this a lot in the shower i love to just let the hot water run out of my neck and just move my head back and forth this way feels amazing this is where i'm really listening to my body right so this is the yoga class where you're going to listen a lot right you're going to find out if this pose works for you i mean this if you try this does it work for you and if not find something else all right, now I'm just loosening up my neck and shoulders, doing a couple more circles. And then we're going to start to do some twists of our spine. So inhale, arms up, exhale to one side. Again, go with the speed that you like, inhaling every time you come up, exhaling every time you twist. So for me, a little bit of movement's actually good. Not only have I been dealing with my health issues, I've also been renovating our shower. So needless to say, some motion in different directions feels amazing. And now I'm going deeper. Notice when I land, I'm pushing down and actually bending, but keeping my hip bones on the floor. Listen to your body here and do what you need for your twists. Maybe you're sitting up straight and twisting, or maybe you're sinking like me, getting into your shell a little bit, right? Oh, and make noises too, it's okay. Moaning and groaning and bodily noises will happen in yoga because you're actually waking up your body. All right. And again, find anything else that you need to do here. Oh yeah. One of the things when you listen to your body is sometimes a warm up will have more time and that's fine. Take breaks if you need, remember to drink your water, <laughs> do whatever you need. And we're going to begin to do some of our other stretches. So one that we normally do is go on our hands and knees and do cat cow. If that's available to you, go right ahead. But since I can't, I'm gonna do seated. So I'm just, again, sitting like this and I'm gonna do the arching, exhale, inhale, lifting up. Oh goodness, that feels good on my back. So breathing as you're finding your cats and cows, going as deep as you need, finding movement. This is kind of like a throwback to my favorite yoga all of the moves that I like. And I'm just gonna show you in the next half hour some different ways to adjust if it works for you. And if you just wanna do your normal yoga, you don't even have to listen to me. Like just coming to your mat is the most important. And again, find some more movement if you need. Um, you know what I like to do? I like to go into seal, but I don't have that available. So I'm gonna do it on the wall. Just arching my back and using the wall as support. <laughs> you remember the wall yoga we did as a uh, glossaric from Star Versus? Again, that's available on YouTube if you need it. Oh, that feels so good. And I'm actually 
actually going to go into um, camel, uh, if it works for you. My knees are very bony right now, so I'm also gonna fold my mat and give a little padding. If you have that blanket or towel, you can do that. So for camel, you start straight and you put your hands on your lower back. And if this is all you can do, that's great. You really wanna pull those elbows together. And for me, I'm able to reach my heels and then look back gently. This is camel. And then you wanna come up with your chin tucked and maybe again, find another stretch to balance it out. And all I'm doing is listening to my body and trying to do those similar things like I would do with our seal and our down dog. So we were kind of doing our cat and cow. We do stretches like lunges. So this is where I will, it's going to be a very dynamic class here. So we can just do standing lunges. Or if you're on your knees, you can extend that one foot back. Either is fine. Either is fine. Pushing your heel down, it does not have to touch the floor. The idea again is to find what your body needs to stretch. Are you stretching your front leg? Does it need to be further forward? Does it need to be further back? Whatever works for you. When you're making adjustments often, having those things that will help you, those aids, the walls, the chairs, straps, blocks, they're all good. You gotta find what works for you. All right, other side. Again, it's gonna feel different on this side. How does it feel to you? Breathing. Because I can't do forward folds, the backs of my legs are super, super sore. So what I'm gonna do is an adjusted fold after this. Again, you can do your own forward fold, you can do your down dogs. Just suggestions. Do another 10 seconds here. Make any adjustments you need. All right, so I said I can't do folds. One thing that I can do is I can use the wall or the table to do a little bit of a fold. So one way to do that, again, is up on the wall, hands are up, and I just go in and let my head fall between my arms. So it's like this. And of course, my microphone needs to travel too. So put your hands between your arms if you're on the wall and just let the stretch hang. Find however you can to get a nice forward fold. else you need. So we've done a little bit of what we would have done in our hands and knees, the forward fold and the down dog. And the other thing that uh, we can do again is those planks and chaturangas, right? So you can use your forearms to press against the wall as well. And I do those as like standing push-ups. It kind of feels like cheating, but at least you still get a little bit of that motion, right? And that's what we're looking for, trying to maintain as much health as possible. Okay, so why don't we go on to some standing poses? So first, mountain pose is the same, right? Just find your center. Feet can be wide or they can be apart. Shoulders back. Find the one that speaks to you. And just breathe. 
Make it an active pose. Lift your toes and then sink them down after you spread them out a little bit. Push down with all the points of your toes in the front and the back. Lift your kneecaps, pull the shoulders back. Very active mountain. Tuck your tummy, pull in those buns. Breathe. All of a sudden it doesn't feel that casual, does it? And then we will do banana. So remember when we lay on the ground and we make those nice stretchy side bananas? We're gonna do that standing. Again, if you wanna lay on the ground, go right ahead. But for us, inhale, hands up. Clasp your hands together and then do a side stretch. So if you just stretch the side, you'll get a different stretch than if you shift your hips out. And maybe hips in or hips out, one feels better than the other. You wanna try and keep yourself vertical uh, you don't want too much of a back bend, you don't want too much of a forward bend, you want to be pretty straight. But if it feels weird, uh, move your hips and your spine where you need to. Again, listen to your body. Breathing into your banana. Remember how we crossed our legs sit and when we were laying down? Maybe try to cross your legs here. Ooh, it really does work. It's a balance pose too. Standing banana. Breathing. And we're gonna be here for about 10 more breaths. And three, two, one, and release. Let those hands down. I know mine are starting to get tingly because they were up in the air so long. Again, listen to your body. If you can't do it that long, no pressure. And then we're gonna do banana on the other side. Inhale, arms up. Grab with the other hand on top if you can remember which one was on top and then slowly find your banana on the other side. Again, noticing where you tick your hips and then maybe crossing your feet. Again, which leg you cross is gonna give you a different stretch. Which way you tilt your back will give you a different stretch. All these different things that you can adjust on your own to make your yoga practice even better. Breathing here. We'll be here for another 10 breaths. cycle is that we like to do our halfway lift right fold inhale up exhale but I can't really do that but if you wanted to do the cycle again you could use the wall and add a little bit of that um, work, whatever works for you the next thing I want to do is some squats because it's good to work those legs out I can do that so inhale arms up hands together Lower yourself down into a squat. And then exhale with the fingers pointing back up. We're gonna do three of these very slowly. Notice your body. Feel how your feet are touching the ground if your heels are up or down. Maybe you need to adjust. One more. And we're gonna hold here. Again, if you need that block underneath, go right ahead. Breathing, tucking that belly in. The more you lift up and tuck, the more you're gonna get that intensity here. Then we're gonna plant one hand and do a little lift. So this is another good twist that I can do currently. If it works for you, go right ahead. Again, I get to be a little greedy since I'm teaching. Coming back down, hands together, other side. And if you want, you can come up into a forward fold from here, but I'm just gonna come back up. If you're in your fold, you can dangle there. I'm just going to go into mountain. Maybe a wide-legged forward fold. Or maybe you need a closed-legged forward fold. Whatever works for you.
Five more breaths. Three, two, and with the last one, we're gonna sink back into your squat. This time we're gonna to start to do widen our feet, right? Just a little bit at a time and shift from side to side. If you want, you can plant your hands and really get wide and make it look like you're a ninja. Remember we did that one with Sabine, I think? A long time ago now, but she's still on YouTube if you missed it. Look at that. And you can have your hands on the ground. Remember, you can use blocks. If I do that, I'm a little bit too inverted, so I just stay like this. And maybe start to lift yourself up, adjusting your feet as you go. And then I'm going to start to kind of shift my hips from one side to the other, getting ready for our warriors. So if you were on all fours, actually we could do it standing, why not? So we're back up. Uh, remember how we used to lift our leg and move our hips? So I'm actually holding them to the wall here. Let's do some hip warm-ups here. Since we were just doing that, probably feels good to stretch it out a little more. In either direction, whatever works. And then the other side. Really working those hips now that we gave them a little stretch. All right, so we talked a little bit about our flow, up dogs, down dogs, standing forward folds. Let's see what happens with warriors, right? <laughs> Pretty much the same. You got your warrior one. One thing that I taught in chair yoga, if you're not able to hold yourself there, is you can use the chair as an aid and just do this. How cool is that, right? So you're getting that stretch across your legs, but you're not holding yourself so much, if that's too much for you. It's cool, I love it. <laughs> Yoga is for everybody, right? So we're in a warrior one. And then normally we would fold and plant your hands on the ground. If that's available, I'm just gonna stay here. Then you would step back into your plank. Chaturanga. Up dog. And down dog. Breathing in your dog. Then you're gonna lift your other leg, step it forward, and find your warrior one on the other side. Ta-da! <laughs> it's really not that different. You're still moving your body no matter which one you choose. And again, feel free to do the normal ones. Just because I am not able does not mean that you are limited, right? All right, and then again, fold forward, planting your hands on the ground if that works for you. Step back into your plank, and then your up dog, and down dog. Again, breathing. Lift that other leg, step it forward into your warrior one, and then we're gonna open into our warrior two. So the same thing as the warrior one, you can take your warrior and sit on the chair if you need. You can hold onto a chair or a wall. Again, you wanna have that wide opening here with your back foot in an angle, front foot forward, hips open, looking over your front fingertips, shoulders back and down. Breathe here. Then if you're able, you can flip your front hand and come into Reverse Warrior. Finding that back bend if it works for you. Breathing. This can be very intense. And then back to Warrior 2. Place your front arm on your leg and sweep your arm up into extended side angle. Breathing here. Again, if you, if you like, you can put your hand on a block. That'd be a little too deep for me. From here,
here, if you can find a bind, you're welcome to, which is where you put your hands together. I'm gonna go on a bird of paradise just because I can do that instead. Finding what you need in your extended side angle. Bird of paradise is really tough. I'll show you it in slow motion. So you're in your extended side angle. Front hand that's on your leg goes down. Hand behind your back goes under. And then you gotta meet together. <laughs> then you step your back leg up and you lift your front foot up. That's the secret. And that's, woo. That's your bird. Notice how my standing knee is bent. And when I come down, you plant that foot and you come right back. Ta-da! We'll try it on the other side too. It's a tough one, but it's one of the ones I really love. I'm gonna get a quick drink of water. I'm listening to my body, right? All right, so we're going into warrior two. Center, five-pointed star. Breathe. From here, if you'd like to do another wide-legged forward fold, feel free. From that wide-legged forward fold, if you want to do an inversion, tucking your feet underneath and lifting up, feel free. For me, uh, I guess I can do it on the wall. That sounds good. And you rotate the other way, da-da! Bend your knees, straighten out your back foot so it's at an angle, front foot forward, knees bent, hips open, warrior two, other side, easy, right? I've been in this around the mat flow routine recently for cosplay and yogis. We are making it our current, um, it's going to be for a bunch of things we're doing this summer, so it's going to be really fun. So if you haven't followed the cosplay and apostrophe yogis on Instagram and TikTok, please do. And we're going to be at AwesomeCon, oh my gosh, before our next stream. So if you're in the DC area or you can get here safely, maybe join us. All right, you're flipping your front hand, going into Reverse Warrior. Breathe in here, noticing the intensity. And then come back to warrior two. And then extended side angle. So putting that arrow on your leg, sweeping under, coming into your angle. And remember to roll your chest open here. It gives you a totally different stretch. And again, you can place your hand on a towel or a towel, a paper towel or a block if you want, right? And then let's try and get into bird of paradise here. So again, that hand that's resting on your knee comes down, this one goes behind, and then you bend into it. I have to move my legs first because I can't bend over, and then you grab your feet, switch, lift. Bird of Paradise, other side. You could straighten your leg if it works. Again, it's not available to many people. I just like doing this, hopping around and looking weird, right? And then you want to slowly place your foot down and step back, getting into your warrior two other side. Whew. I didn't know it would be this challenging, <laughs> but it's fun. I'm glad that you're here sharing this with me today. Okay, so from here, you can go back into your warrior one. All we're doing is pivoting that back foot, lifting in, and then you can plant your hands and push back, going through your flow to find your down dog. All right, if you need to here, you can slip into child pose, maybe give those hips a nice little stretch. I'm gonna go into hero. And just tuck there. So in your child's pose, or your hero, your resting pose, whatever that is for you. Breathing. From here, 
we're gonna do one that my legs have been asking for for quite a while. We're gonna go into our gate pose. So come up onto your knees. That's the easiest way to do it from here. And then you step one foot out. I notice the blade of my foot is down. That's a good start. Then you can take your arms up. There are two ways we can go here. We can fold over that extended leg, which feels so good. Going as deep as you want. Maybe twisting your neck or maybe looking straight. I'm gonna be here for a few more seconds, guys. Again, take a break if you need to, but this feels amazing. Five, three, two, and use your core to lift up here. Throw in a tic-tac to the other side. I need a block for this. And da da paper towel roll, right? Other side. to your depth that you can do. For five, three, two, and back up. Then we're gonna switch sides. So come back to your knees, stretch out that other leg. And again, for any of these, if you can just only go one way, go ahead, find what works for you. We're gonna go up to our T. Folding over the extended leg. Oh yeah. Ooh. For me, I'm getting this nice, nice side stretch. Even better than the banana. Can you believe it? We thought banana was everything, but this is even more for me right now. Yes. All right, we're gonna hang here for a little bit. I have no idea why my sides are so tight. But again, that's listening to your body. All right, five more breaths. Three, two, and up. Holding here and then getting ready to tick-tock to the other side. When you're ready. And back up. Whoop. So from here, if you want to go into your cat cows, right, it's easy to go into uh, a little bit of a stretch on your hands and knees, and then you can push into your down dog. And then from your down dog, you're gonna find your way to standing. So you can step, hop, jump, do a flow, whatever it is that you want. We're gonna do two more poses standing up before our balance pose. Well, actually one is a balance pose. Who am I kidding, right? So first we're gonna do a little bit of chair pose, just again, to work those legs out. So keep your legs a little bit wider than your hips. Inhale, arms up. And then exhale, you're just gonna lower down into chair. Your hands can come to your heart if it works for you. They can be out, it's fine. <laughs> Notice how pointy my bum is, right? It's just like a little angle, it's so crazy. <laughs> I see myself in the mirror, I'm like, oh my gosh, you have a, you have a body. All of us have bodies. And then from here, come back up. And if you wanna go through a forward fold, I know that's available. I'm gonna go down into chair one more time. I'm gonna twist one way. Hooking that elbow with the knee if it works for you. It's almost a little bit too much for me. So I'm just gonna do it a little higher. Come back to center. Twist the other way. Thank goodness, this is your practice. You don't have to do any of this. And back to center and fold. Good job, that's all we're doing. <laughs> Inhale up. Exhale, release in the mountain. Get myself another drink. Okay, next is eagle. 
So remember, there are lots of options for eagle arms. You can just hug yourself. You can put your hands together. You can put your hands together and then twist so that the backs of the hands are touching each other. And you can do full ones. So I'll demonstrate now away from the mic. Even with these little spikies, I got the eagle arms. Now notice which arm is on top. The other leg should go on top. Then you've got your eagle legs. And you can twist them more if you want to get into balance. Keep that standing knee bent. And breathe. It's okay to lose your balance. It's fine. What works for you? And then slowly untwist. Shake it out. Then the other side. Other arm on top. Find your eagle arms. Look at what's on top. Other leg goes on top and then twist in. If you can't lift your elbows a little, that changes the stretch in your arms. You can also lower into that to almost a squat. And then slowly release. Good. Shake it out. We're going to do some trees. Again, you can do this standing. You can use it on a wall, on a chair. Whatever works for you. So first, notice your feet. Notice how they touch the ground. Lift those toes, spread them out, place them down. Really get grounded. Go into that active, active mountain pose. Pulling everything in. Feel your connection to the earth. Catch your breath. And then slowly begin to shift your weight into the right side. Starting to just lift that other foot. Finding a kickstand, lifting it up a little, placing it where you need, but do not put it on your knee, that causes injury. And remember, your standing knee should stay bent. Don't lock it. Then you can find a place for your arms. Up, in. I'm gonna put mine behind my back in prayer, like this. Because that feels amazing. We're gonna be here for about 20 seconds, so play around with it. If you close your eyes, it gets more challenging. If you wave your arms around, it gets challenging too. It's a different kind of thing. You're not falling. You're actively moving your body in the balance. Have fun with it. 10 more seconds. And when you're ready, start to shake yourself out. Whew. Come back to your mountain your active mountain, lifting up those toes, placing each toe separately, engaging your whole body here, breathing. Noticing how different the standing leg feels. And then we're gonna balance it out. So start to shift the weight into your left foot, slowly lifting your right, coming into either a kickstand or finding a place on your leg that works for you. Placing your arms woo, in a place that works for you. And we're gonna be here again for about 20 seconds. Remember to keep that standing knee bent. Chin up, shoulders back, breathing. And again, maybe having fun or maybe like me wavering, not on purpose, but still finding my balance. When you're ready, slowly coming out of it. All right, here comes the fun part. So we're gonna start to come into the ground-based, ground-based <laughs> end of the lesson. So inhale, arms up. Exhale, we're gonna go into a squat one more time just to find our way to the ground. We're gonna linger just a little bit in this squat. So stay here. And then when you're ready, coming down. All right, we've got time, so I'm just gonna do staff pose where your feet are out straight in front of you. 
sit up straight and it's gonna be like a forward fold but keep your spine straight breathing here and then after a little bit with your spine straight you can invite that little bend in breathing and then come back up I'm gonna pull one leg in just like we were doing our tree except now we're sitting and then just do another forward fold here really stretching out thanking our legs and hips they actually did a ton today and again you can linger here as long as you need we're gonna switch sides Coming forward with that straight spine first. Noticing if that works for you or maybe inviting a gentle bend. Again, you're not going to touch your, well, you're not aiming to touch your toes. But if you can, feel free. And again, if that's, if you're super flexible, why not put that block on the end? Trying to reach behind the block to give you that extra stretch. All right, come on back in. We're gonna do love knot. Love knot is where you shift into your sits bones and lift your legs and then you give yourself a little hug with your arms crossed here and then you let your head down. You might notice your abs shaking <laughs> like mine are because this is, you're pulling yourself in here and you're balancing on those sit bones. Keep breathing. I know it might be tough in this pose and again, if it doesn't work for you, feel free to Step out. And then stretching out into boat pose, my favorite. So if you can and you wanna do those active boat sit-ups, feel free, I cannot. And again, you don't have to do this. <laughs> We're gonna hold it for 10, nine, eight, seven, and again, you can stop anytime, six, <laughs> Five, four, three, two, and let it go. Falling onto your back if that's available to you. Nice work. We're gonna go into diamond with our legs here, where you pull your feet together and make a little diamond with your legs flopped out if that's available to you. Again, you can be laying on your back. I am not. And put your arms where you need. You can be out in a T, you can be above your head. Just thanking those hips for doing that hard work. I'm gonna be here for another five, three, two, and one. Pull those knees together, tuck your feet up towards your hips. So your feet are down and you're laying down like this. And then pull your legs in and give yourself a hug. Maybe even rocking back and forth. And then extend one leg out and hold that knee in. I'm actually gonna do it standing because it feels good. And then you're gonna open that hip and then cross it over and come into your laying or standing for me. Twist, spinal twist. Again, maybe look in the opposite direction of your leg. And again, when you're ready, lifting it up, giving it one more hug, switching sides, pulling that knee in. First, opening the hip up, and then crossing over, giving yourself a spinal twist on this side. And finding where you need to look, where you need to move your arms. And then come back.
back out of it. Pull both knees in one more time. Give them a nice big hug. And then plant in your heels. You have the option here to go into bridge where you're laying down and you plant your shoulders and your hips and you lift into it. I'm doing <laughs> normal bridge, which actually is a little too much, so maybe I'll go into a uh, hero, a modified hero, and then let go. When you're ready, you can go into another bridge. Remembering to press with the feet and the shoulders. And let go when you need to. We'll be doing three. So you can always do a wheel for the last one if it's available. And again, tucking your chin if you did flip over when you're coming back down. You have a thousand options for Savasana, but first, if there's any other stretches that you need to make, do that first. You can do a legs up the wall savasana since you worked your legs so hard. You can do, um, I was gonna do the little ramp. I don't have it. So instead, I'm gonna use my block. The idea with savasana for this one is if you can get your feet up, either resting them on a block or a chair. Find a way that your feet can be dangling. You feel subconsciously safe when your feet aren't touching anything. So find your laying down savasana and lift up your feet, whether you're resting on a block or legs up on the wall. Or again, if it doesn't feel good to you, you can just do normal savasana. Wherever you are, start to settle in. Finding your final rest. Notice your breathing. Notice how, again, that temperature feels on your body. Notice the pace. Is it in your shoulders still? Is it in your chest or your belly? And start to come back to that intention to meet yourself where you are. Where are you now? Has it changed since the beginning of your practice? And what do you need? Continue to listen to your body, and not just during this practice, but as we go forward. Giving yourself that grace to acknowledge what you can do and accept what you cannot do or cannot control because both can be very, very frustrating. Remember, we are all different. We have different abilities, different energy. We get injured. Remember to keep trying. I'm gonna settle into your Savasana now again, making any last movements that you need. And I'm gonna give you a generous four minutes to settle in and enjoy your savasana.
You can stay here as long as you need. And if you're with me, we're going to start to deepen our breath. Come back to your body. Just noticing your breath. Noticing where your body is touching the ground. Noticing the feel of the air on your skin. Take a deep breath in. Exhale. And start to wiggle those fingers and toes. Maybe introducing some movement into your wrists and your ankles. And then when you're ready, start to draw yourself into a big circle, maybe giving yourself a hug. And maybe stretching out the other way, going into a full body stretch. Oh yeah. And then when you're ready, you're just gonna roll to one side and stay there for a moment. Again, noticing what we call the in-between. Going from your corpse pose and death into the next part of your life. Thank yourself for being here, for taking the time to go through a yoga practice that allowed you to make a lot of choices to listen to yourself and to do those things because you met yourself where you are. And keep that in mind as we go forward. Always listen to your body and thank yourself for what you have because you are you. And that will be who you always are. With that, you can roll up into a seated position, keeping your eyes closed or inviting a gentle gaze. Rolling those shoulders back and down, getting nice and cozy here. And think about that intention. Do you want to keep it going forward? And if you want to change it, feel free to now. And we're going to seal that next intention and our practice together by inhaling, lifting your arms up. Exhaling, drawing your hands together down to heart center. And again, two breaths in, one inhale. Let it go. And the biggest inhale yet. And let everything go. The light, the love, and the teacher in me honors and thanks the light, the love, and the teacher in all of you. Thank you so much for sharing this yoga practice, meeting yourself where you are. And I look forward to our next practice together. Namaste. Thank you, thank you, thank you again for being here. Karun, it's wonderful to see you. Thank you for sharing this with me. I hope that the following month can be better for all of us as we go forward. And again, please follow me at Riffling Designs on social media for my conventions, right? So I'll be going to AwesomeCon. I'll be going probably to Otakon. It hasn't been confirmed yet, but again, we'll be doing the cosplay and yogis yoga. I'll give you a spoiler. I got a spider suit. I'm so excited. It's going to be a spider. So you will have your friendly neighborhood Spidey and it's going to be amazing. And I cannot wait to get some photos. So there may or may not be a spider cosplay yoga sometime in one of these last Saturdays of the month. But until then, enjoy, have fun, and I will see you next time. So take care, everybody.